San Diegans doing what they can to stay safe. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Steve Price. And I'm Alicia Summers. As you can see, we are not immune to the coronavirus as I am working from home this weekend, trying to maintain a social distance. We're really trying our best to model the vigilance that the state and the county are asking of all of us right now. But we are working hard together to bring you the news. And I'm really missing my partner in news, Steve Price, who is at the station holding it down. It looks like a ghost town in there, Steve. We are in very different times. This is becoming the new normal, that's for sure. A lot of people trying to learn now how to do their job from home uh, to do it from as far away from the office as possible to try to keep everybody safe. All right, here's the latest on coronavirus in California. By the way, there are 1,382 confirmed COVID-19 cases statewide. 24 people have died now. We're waiting for the county to update their local numbers. They do so about this time every day. But as of last night, there were 131 cases across San Diego. That was a 26 person jump from the day before. But the best news of all, we have had no deaths reported here in San Diego so far. All right, more than half of the cases here locally in our county are people under the age of 50. So you young people who think I'm not going to get it, more than half of the people here are under 50. We've also learned that San Diego City Council candidate Kelvin Barrios has tested positive for COVID-19. Residents being urged to heed the stay at home orders to slow the spread of the virus. And if you do go outside, make sure you keep your distance. And as you see in this video here, wash and sanitize your hands often. And today also marks the first day of the border shutdown. It's closed to non-essential travel to try and stop the spread of the coronavirus. Now, this move comes as the number of confirmed cases here continues to climb. News 8's Heather Hope live now at the border with more on who will still be allowed to cross and the impact this is all having on our local economy. Heather. Yes, Steve, Alicia, a huge impact. As Alicia said, maybe like a ghost town in the newsroom, but here at the border, definitely reminiscent of a ghost town. If you remember when we were doing the border closures just for the construction, as it was virtually empty at that point, that's how it is looking now at one of the busiest port of entries in the country. There's nobody. There's a few cars. A desolate scene down at the U.S.-Mexico border. The small businesses, this is going to hurt the most. The Consul General of Mexico in San Diego, Carlos Gonzalez Gutierrez, shares the new measures taken in response to COVID-19. We certainly need it because we need to promote on both sides of the border social distancing. For a period of 30 days, border crossings between the two countries will partially be limited to essential trips only. Although land crossings will be reduced and there will be health controls at the border, these measures are designed so not to interrupt commerce. Certainly Mexican authorities on the Mexican side will not stop them, will not interrupt these daily flow of people. The U.S. and Mexico agreed not to limit the normal movement of workers and students who cross the border daily to carry out their activities. You just have to show your U.S. citizenship or your green card and, 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 and they will allow you to get in with no further questions asked. Pedro Rios of the American Friends Service Committee notes there could be a huge loss in local business. Potentially we're looking at uh, tens of millions of dollars that will be lost um, in just the regular um, shoppers that come over. Truck drivers or U.S. citizens may freely return to their home countries and people traveling to either country for medical reasons will be allowed to cross. It's okay for not spreading the, the virus. But not everyone agrees. I don't think closing the border is the answer. I think having some sort of uh, safeguards. Enrique Monrones of Hinta Unida says frustration could mount for many not knowing how long this partial closure could last. So right now the uncertainty is very difficult to deal with. And that uncertainty remains as it's unclear how long, even beyond the 30 days, that the border will look like this. So new at 630, you think this looks empty? We'll show you a look at San Diego International Airport. Steve and Alicia. All right, Heather, the California Department of Food and Agriculture has said you don't have to go far to get your local produce. Farmers markets in the state of California are open. They've been declared essential business, but they must abide by some stringent safety changes. Tuesday's Tim Blodgett took a trip to the Poway Farmers Market to see how our local vendors are coping. Well, with many produce aisles cleaned out in grocery stores, people are looking for a way to get their fresh fruits and vegetables. That's why some customers are saying thank goodness for open-air farmers markets. 
The Gouda mixed with the palm. Each Gouda mixed with the palm. For the last four years, Elliot Dugby has been slicing fine cheeses from around the world in his booth at the Poway Farmer's Market. Hello, I know you. How you doing? I'm okay. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Dugby's company, Ches Elliot, primarily caters events. And with coronavirus shutting down food services? There's nothing we can do. Yeah. It's just unfortunate. It's here, like farmers markets in Poway and Little Italy, that have kept some vendors afloat in these uncertain times. They're very grateful to have somewhere to go. They like to be out here, you know, talking to the customer. But they're not without caution. Suzanne Ben Dixon, the Poway Farmers Market Manager, says that they've taken precautions. We spaced our farmers uh, all 10 feet apart. There is now a 30 foot walkway in the middle instead of 10 feet. And signs saying not to self sample, including the best cheese. Don't sample the cheese anymore, and that's affect uh, at least 50% of the business straight away because uh, people don't really know some of the cheese, and uh, if they don't try it, they will be able to, to buy it. Got a whole lot left. All we have is sugar snap peas, uh, fennel. And when you can skip the crowds at the grocery store, we had, like I said, mountains and mountains of carrots sold out in like an hour today. So uh, the farmer's market's where it's at. Why not eat fresh? and local. Local produce has always been a hot commodity, even so, more so now. Well, if you need your fresh fruit and veg, the Poway Farmer's Market is open every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Stephen Alicia, back to you. Tim, thanks tonight. The number of COVID-19 cases nationwide has surged past 25,000 with 308 deaths reported. The FDA has given emergency approval to a new 45 minute test but hospitals are bracing for a flood of new patients amid a, sh a shortage of protective masks and respirators. Michael George has the very latest. President Trump has approved a disaster declaration for Thank New York State. Much. This is the first time in our nation's history that a president's used the Stafford Act to declare a major disaster in response to a public health crisis. The designation opens the way for billions of dollars in emergency federal aid to be sent to one of the state's hardest hit by the coronavirus. President Trump said other parts of the country, such as California, may also receive disaster aid. New York, California, Illinois, Connecticut, and Oregon are all taking measures to restrict residents' movements outside their homes. The nation's top infectious disease expert says mitigation efforts are working, but it's hard to say how well. We know we are clearly having an effect, but we can't quantitate it for you accurately now. On Capitol Hill, senators are spending the weekend trying to finalize details of a trillion-dollar economic stimulation package. The bipartisan bill includes relief for small businesses, loans to impacted industries, and direct cash payments to individuals based on income and family size. Joanne Imwali is a nurse at a hospital near Sacramento. She goes into the rooms of patients who have infectious diseases, such as the coronavirus. We're coming in and taking care of patients that have something that's infectious that we could actually get and potentially die from. Healthcare workers are facing a critical shortage of masks. Vice President Pence, who's leading the White House task force, says masks are being prioritized to areas in greatest need. He urged companies and dentists to donate masks to hospitals. Michael George, CBS News, New York.